Hey guys, so <clears throat> I just got this product in the mail. Um, I've never tried this brand before. Um, if you've been following along with our videos, then you're actually kind of up to date with what we've been doing. Um, I've never used this resin before, and I guess we're gonna try it out. So this particular one is uh, Monocure 3D Rapid White. Um, we're using white because we're actually going to be changing the color. Um, this is something that maybe you've run into once or twice in your 3D printing, like you didn't see a color that you liked. So this is uh, a CMYK kit, just like printer ink. Basically you can, uh, you know, just add the colors and you make whatever you want. Um, now there is a limit to how much you can add and I don't really know what that limit is yet. Um, there was actually no instructions that came with this. There was just a sticker in this, this empty pouch. Um, I think there might be a couple of directions on here, but anyway, it's it's not gonna be too big a deal. Um, I watched the video online and it said to do small batches. So about 100 grams or so, we're gonna weigh that out. And we're just gonna follow the um, the recipe. I went and I just Googled the the CMYK recipe for the color I want, which is mauve. This is for a client project. Of course, they needed you know something specific color-wise and it doesn't exist, so I had to order this to make it. Anyway, here's the RGB, um, the RGB recipe, and then the CMYK. So it's 28% um, magenta, 9% yellow, and then 28% uh, black. So yeah, I guess we'll see how this works out. Um, we're only gonna do the 100 gram batch, as I said. So if this doesn't work out, it's not a catastrophe. Uh, I think there's more than enough resin, and this is a one liter thousand thousand mil I think there's more than enough resin here to do the entire job so you know it should be fine it says very specifically avoid spills I, I have a feeling this is a very like potent a very potent uh, pigment like it'll stain pretty much everything so maybe I'm gonna actually get some gloves and something to cover my table all right gloves <clears throat> so I've been shaking this for a little bit <clears throat> And one thing I am kind of worried about with this is that, um, this stuff smells like Prusa, it's all right. Um, one thing I am a little bit worried about is that I don't have any of these, any more of these light proof bottles. So I'm, again, like small batches, but if I have any extra that I like the color of, I'm gonna have to figure out how to store them. So anyway, so let's measure out a hundred grams. All right, so that's 100 grams of the Monocure White. Now we're going to start adding, I guess drop by drop, we're gonna figure out exactly how to make this mauve purple. So it said black, uh, we don't need any, no cyan, we'll just put that one aside, but we need 28% magenta, 28% black, and 9% yellow. So I don't know, I guess we'll just start with Magenta. And I don't know what percentage is going to be in terms of 100 grams. Um, we're just going to keep mixing, I guess, until we figure this out. So we'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten drops of magenta. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. Okay, so if ten drops, let's do like, I don't know, one, two, three. Oh yeah, that makes purple. That's kind of funky. I wish she could like, I wonder if you can print it just like this. That'd be kind of neat.
Wow, I think I actually got it right on. Gonna have to see what 100 grams looks like in the uh, printer itself, like how many percentage that is. Uh, like tank fullness, how, many, how, how much that fills the tank. Um, in theory, I could just extrapolate. So if it was 100 grams of white to 10 drops of red to 10 drops of black to, what was it, five drops of yellow, we'll just double it for a 200 gram batch and we'll see what that comes to. So <clears throat> now uh, I guess my, my biggest concern is that maybe I might have added too much pigment because there's really nothing to say that I did or not. Um, I mean, it feels like the same consistency as what it did when it came, when it was still white. Um, I guess we're going to see how well it, it cures under UV. So I'm going to get this, uh, get this in the printer and we'll see how it works. So I'll, I'll let you know. All right. So I had to mix some extra purple. Um, apparently the Prusa tank is 200 uh, milliliters of, of resin. So I went back and did a, a second batch and I combined them. The colors were basically the same. Uh, I don't think there'll be any problem. Um, I did notice that on the, the side of the glass container when I, when I had washed it, um, there was actually, uh, maybe there was a reflection or something in the scale and it actually started to cure just a, like a very thin film of the stuff on the outside. So if that's any indicator, I think this is gonna be just fine. I didn't add a, a, enough pigment to dilute it so badly that it would be, um, that it wouldn't cure. Um, I noticed in the Prusa slicer as well that the um, the cure times are a little bit shorter um, by like, you know, a second or something like that for mono cure. Uh, these are gonna be key rings or keychain bag tag things. So um, I, for kids as well. So I hope that this is uh, fairly durable, but either way it's, it's affordable to, to replace. So it's not too bad. Anyway, I'll be back in two hours and three minutes and I'll show you how this resin cured. All right, so the print is finished and uh, I didn't actually get too far. I was just kind of scraping off some of the excess resin, letting it drip down. And uh, you can't really tell a whole lot about the quality yet, just because pretty much everything is still saturated with extra resin. But I mean, the model did come out nicely as, as you can see. Colors there, everything's nice and even. So let's give it a wash and I'll be able to tell you more in like two minutes. All right, <clears throat> so this is now washed. Looks good to me. Looks really good. We're gonna let that cure or dry and cure. All right, <clears throat> so this just finished curing and drying. Let's see what we got. It looked good. A little bit wet still inside, but uh, oh, it's, it's very interesting. Got kind of a weird um, reflective thing on there. Hmm. It doesn't feel different if that makes any sense, like it doesn't, I don't know. Maybe that was just, uh, the pigment wasn't quite mixed or something, let's see if it's on the other ones. Yeah, it seems to be on all of them in pretty much the same way, actually. Yeah, very interesting. It's, uh, it's not a deal breaker for me. Um, I actually have to sand, uh, sand these a little bit to take off some of the support material. So it's no biggie, I'm just gonna do a light sanding on the back and then they all get like a, a clear UV spray. 
and uh, and that should should be it. But anyway, so I guess the main point, main talking point about this is that yes, the CMYK kit works. If you need a custom color of resin, then there you go. So you just literally Google <clears throat> your CMYK recipe. It'll tell you a percentage of what you need for that particular color. Mix it accordingly and uh, shake well, and then I guess happy printing. So uh, <clears throat> anyway, thanks for watching, guys. This is going to be a quick little video. If um, if you're interested in any more of the any other printing to do with this, uh, take a look at our other videos. We have a couple about um, the castable material. Uh, we've got a couple other like this one here, the resin works. This was one of our last videos. This is castable, and uh, the the finished product looks awesome. So that's something to look up if you're interested. Um, so yeah, overall happy printing. Thank you for watching.